Well, we look good. So we got that going for us. Awesome. Which is nice. Awesome. Redirecting I'm trying to your see. Facebook. Oh, there we are right page. there. Look at that. Boom. We are live right now. We are live right now. Gratitude good. Gaslighting bad. <clears throat> yep. I like it. Oh yeah. There we are. So now again. Um, so if you're uh, if you're watching this later, I want to wait until we have uh, about uh, ten of our friends and family here. So we're gonna spend a few minutes um, sharing the such places. Um, if you feel like sharing this, that's fantastic. The first like five or ten minutes today, I want to try something new. Uh, Greg and I are back from a week long break that uh, was potentially going to be a month because we had to get our well, I had to get my head screwed on straight, and Greg was like, "Fuck it, I like breaks." <laughs> That's um true yeah so <clears throat> we're uh we're just gonna do some uh some gratitude stuff and like just some fucking positivity a little bit uh, <laughs> dave sorry buddy <laughs> sorry about that yeah sorry we're not practicing good social media distancing there dave yeah it's terrible it's terrible I mean, really, we would all be infinitely more uh, uh, mentally and emotionally healthy if we just like nuked Facebook and Twitter from our lives. I think that's pretty uh, pretty clear at this point. Excuse me. Um. So, yeah, where are we at here? I think this, I, someone six or seven or eight people at eight right now in there. I share now. Here's the thing. I also shared it to Soul Local Pasco. And there are still some problematic people that follow the Soul Local Pasco page. They just haven't gotten the hint yet. So it'll be interesting to I'm see right. uh, how That's that okay. goes. Uh, but while we're, while we're waiting for a crowd to build, we look at we're at 11 now. But uh, while we're waiting, uh, I think we, we can safely say out loud uh, that we're going to be coming back to Facebook with this. Um, yeah. Facebook, face, Facebook needs uh, some bleach oh. injected directly into its lungs. <laughs> and we feel like maybe that's where we should be right now. Mm. Mm. Dave, we're going to talk about that. We are absolutely going to talk about news. <clears throat> um, and obviously participate in this section or don't. Um, something that I, I was talking to Casey Marion over, over the last week and, and a couple other people. And they expressed to me the just that I should get over feeling shitty about, you know, skipping a week and, you know, they're just being generally cool, which is what I've come to expect from all of you people. Um, but to, to, to them, this is way more about community than it is about the news. Um, and that really got my attention because I absolutely feel that. And I think sometimes I, I, I forget it. So basically like in, with the understanding that I am basically losing my mind, in full recognition of the fact that this is probably something that other people are feeling as well. Um, I just want to borrow from the, the goals and gratitude days and just have this little, you know, five minute thing or whatever. If you're, if you're watching this, um, write out three things you're grateful for in the comments. Um, <clears throat> and obviously you get extra points if they're recent, if they're about other people, especially if you can then express that gratitude to them. It's, it's like, it's like bleach. It's like injecting bleach into your brain. <laughs> well, you got to get some sunlight in there. Yeah. yeah exactly. that's good for your well, brain. First, first, you need to drill a hole in your skull, get a collection of mirrors, pour yes. the sunlight and bleach into your brain. Yes. Self-trepanation is a thing. <laughs> so uh first things first i'm grateful to you greg for deciding to come and do this with me even though i told you to fuck off and that you didn't have to and you're like no way like let's do it well i thank missed you. it i missed it I, yeah me, me too it's it's legit but thank you for uh for doing that um i yeah, will get there dave yeah we're 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 definitely here for that i gotta talk about the foundation too um i'm grateful for all 14 of you uh for showing up and that uh, some percentage of you will actually share this because hashtag sharing is caring. You remember the, remember the Coffee of the Doc days? How many times I said sharing is caring? Yeah. Like 100 a, a day? Anyway. Yes. Little, little throwback situation. Yes, that and midget porn. Those were probably the two things you said the most, <laughs> the most hundreds still, of times. 
every once in a while I feel guilty about the how much Tom had to deal with that. <laughs> But, but then you remember enough. that that whole circle of people is kind of. <laughs> yeah, not, not, I definitely wouldn't change it. <laughs> um, Lori Bersani. Yeah. Thing. Hey, Lori Bersani fighting the good fight this morning. Uh, oh my Lord. We're going to get to that, but we, we got it. We got a crowd now. We got 17 people. Corey had a specific way he wanted to get us started this morning. So let's do that. And then we'll get to all the other stuff. Thank you. As um, soon as he's I done chewing. More. I'll uh, yeah. I'll, I'll vamp while you chew. Sorry. Yeah. No. I. I just my my third. I'm just grateful for Babs got to hang out with her all weekend, and oh, she's awesome. Go ahead, Greg. Oh, is, am I vamping? What? Or am I just doing gratitude? Are you, are, that... are you great? Yeah. You do whatever you want. Okay. So, um, I have not been very public about this because of past disastrous uh, situations, but I I'm really grateful for my girlfriend Misha Freeman. Um, who took me on a really great little two day trip? I mean, she's great. She's awesome for other reasons than that, but really, you know, dug in and thought about what would be a fun thing for uh, for me to have for my birthday. And it turned out that, you know, a day at the Kennedy Space Center and then another day driving all around, uh, talking and learning about history over there, uh, had a fantastic kind of reset couple of days. On the way home, we stopped at Silver River State Park. That's where Silver Springs is. And uh, we took a bushwhack walk down uh, off of a trail and took an illicit swim in the Silver River where you're not supposed to swim. Uh, and it was like uh, Adventure Girl. So I'm really grateful for, for Mishi. She's, uh, she's, she's, uh, she's been very good for me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Understanding of, 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 of my health challenges. I'm understanding of hers. We're, uh, we're doing pretty good. So I'm grateful for my girlfriend today. And I just called her my girlfriend on the air. So uh, that's now a thing. Your microphone does not appear to be working. Well, I was just talking to myself. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just saying everyone clearly knows that uh, it's not real on Facebook. and or It's not real until you, it's out on Facebook, basically. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. this is the funniest part is I, 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 she and I had never met in person. And uh, we were, you know, liking each other's posts for several months. And I finally, I called her up one day and said, hey, we should maybe, you know, like uh, get together for a coffee. And she right, she shot right back. She goes, wait, aren't you in a relationship? And it turns out I had never changed my relationship status from 2000, I don't know, 12. <laughs> so, yeah, she didn't know that I, it, it, I, she didn't know that I was not in a relationship. And that's how we started dating. And it's about uh, four months ago now. So, yeah. Uh, from Dave Myers, grateful for the sunburn and sore muscles I have. I saw those pictures. It means I had a busy weekend building a new dock and kind with my girlfriend. The scratches on my arms. It means my dogs are still super healthy and playful and like kicking my ass. And three, the sweat on my forehead. It means I'm at work and earning money. So even, even putting in all of the negativity into each one of those gratitudes, which is it's Dave Myers. He doesn't really have a choice. He has to do that. It's still super good. So Dave, seriously, brother, thank you very much for, for that. It's good shit. Good shit. What else we so got? Your... Oh, you got it. Yep. Uh, conscious, responsible, thinking people. Uh, AC, amen. And a family who loves as hard as we fight. Nice. All right. Nice. Virginia Rupert. Yeah, it's not official until there's an FB status change. Uh, Ash. Hey, good morning, Ash. Uh, just saw your YouTube video and decided to pop over. I'm so glad you are here. Haley Ferris. Nice to see you this morning. I hope uh, you and Dino are doing doing well. Let's right. see what else we got. Um, a lot of happy for me's. That's very nice of you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Let me scroll up a bit more. Where did you stay and how did you manage the social distance? Uh, we stayed at a, at a Days Inn over on the East Coast, and we, we masked up anywhere we went inside. But I'll tell you, it got scarier as we were gone. Like, we, you know, we kind of went. We kind of knew things were brewing, but we didn't have any idea how bad the numbers were until midday on Friday. But Kennedy Space Center had some some uh, some real limits in place, uh, so we we did okay. We're we're both a little worried, you know. It's more time out in the world than we really uh, probably should have spent. But and, and I'll tell you something else that happened is when we got home, we both sort of realized this might be the last, you know, the last trip anywhere for a little while, like. 
uh, you know, I don't think I don't think either of us is going to be ready to do that again soon. We're both immunocompromised. Donna, my roommate, has health challenges. My mom is seventy five and and you know living like a living like a hermit right now. So we may just uh, we may just wait a while <clears throat> before we try and do anything like that again. Uh, Maria right. Richardson, good morning. I'm grateful for my, for my and my family's health, my job, and that you guys took a break and feel better. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Jareen's grateful that Mojo Dog let me sleep in until eight o'clock this morning. That's always nice. Uh, Deb Avetta, uh, grateful for my friends working from home and all of you in this group. Look at you people. Look at you people being all all grateful and awesome. Uh, there you go, Corey. That's an awesome one. I'm grateful for Sahara Dust bringing fertilizer to the plants of America, AC as well as my family. Nice. That's a really good point. That it, there is a giant cloud of nutrient dense freaking sand <laughs> floating across the ocean did you did you see i can't remember what it was but you, did you see the the like the tonnage that they calculated no it's it's like it's monstrous like completely insane how uh how much actual weight Corey, if maybe if you know let us know you know um, we we have this every year this is just a, a of course this year it, it's a yeah it's, it's 2020 big, i mean yeah yeah <clears throat> All right, so um, it's probably got that mummy. That mummy thing is probably in it, though. Legitimately, if you look <laughs> at it side lo- sideways, there will be a face in it, uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I think that like that's just uh, expected at this point. Uh, thank you guys so much for uh, for playing along. We have twenty seven people in here. Um, we had about uh, maybe uh, 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 ten or twelve people express some gratitudes, which is fantastic. I would love to see. Even just one simple gratitude from literally everyone watching. If you're watching this right now, just comment something that you're grateful for. Nice. This trains the brain to not only see the actual positive in our life, but it's an antidepressant um, and just perspective. And 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 it's how we're gonna fucking start every single one of these shows until the fucking world gets better. Hey, <laughs> I want to get to this after that. Want to get to this specific one, Lori Bersani, flexibility and Barry adjusting with me on this whole thing. Gratitude. That's a big deal. We had a couple of conversations about that. And you know what, Lori, I'm really glad that's happening for you. I was, uh, yeah, you know, we had, we had a couple of nice long talks about that. Good news. Maybe the new house is helping with that too. Maybe the, the location change, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that you can geographically cure a problem, uh, in a relationship because no matter where you go, there you are, but sometimes a, a reset, uh, helps us see things a little differently. So, Yeah. Um, Dave's been collecting up the Sahara dust, uh, so hit me, hit him up if you're interested. Uh, Forty dollars a gram, nice. Um, considering I think it's like eighty quadrillion tons or some shit, you should make a lot of money, which is good. Mom, good morning, mom. Grateful for my veggie garden and my flowers. It's awesome. Um, so yeah, twenty six people in here is fantastic. That's actually like double the uh, the average that, uh, that we were getting on on YouTube, um, which is awesome. And the share button is actually much easier on Facebook. I'm just saying, if That's you felt like sharing this out to people, we, would uh, we wouldn't mind. We're not going to be super upset about that. Um, before we get too deep into it, if you haven't uh, gotten onto the waiting list for Chirp yet, please do it. Part of the other reason why I was like, yeah, fuck it. Let's come back to Facebook. You're is a little hot. Everyone... Your mic's a little hot. Just let it's you know. It's turned all the way down. I just got it too close. Yeah. You're um, yelling sorry, into man. the microphone. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, buddy. <laughs> um like michelle had to do that to me in the kitchen she's like we were talking about <laughs> sailboats and like we we're this we we're this far apart and she's like oh right next to you dude and i was like ah, oh. i was excited talking and yeah so i apologize yeah. to everybody's earballs for for that um anyway um if somebody has a a, a link uh for uh for their referral link for uh, the troop waiting list feel free to throw it in the comments um yeah we're building a whole other social media platform um, where people are going to be making uh, uh, cryptocurrency off of the content that uh, that they create. Like Andrew Yang talks about owning your data and getting getting paid off all the content that uh, that gets produced on Facebook and Twitter. We totally agree with it, so we're actually just going to build it. Um, <clears throat> and I uh, I would love to have all of you guys come over there and 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 help to develop it. Uh, it's basically I'm telling the 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 team that iterates features really really quickly. Um, as they did in the beta, kind of what we want and, and, and what we want to see and what we need. 
so I think it's a really, really amazing opportunity for us to uh, uh, to, to create that and 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 start to, uh, building a community over there. Which of course is going to be a challenge, right? Because even Facebook is super sticky. Right. Well, I added myself to the list and I haven't checked back, so I don't know. I don't know where I am. I think it was like seventy fourth <laughs> on the list when I did. It was a week yeah, and a half ago. I think there's a thousand, so I think you're good. Oh, and okay. if you if you so if you go back to that link, um, it okay. automatically. <laughs> well, and I, I if you use anybody's, it should it should work on uh, on your uh, uh, computer. It gives you a referral link. So if you invite even a couple of people, like maybe tomorrow we'll get your referral link and use that one. Let's do that. You could, yeah, you could probably get like to into the top twenty. Uh, okay. And the higher the higher up you are, the more uh, uh, coins you're gonna get. Because we're actually run this thing on something called coins because we're uh, funny. <laughs> well, you're mildly amusing anyway. Yes, at so least that's... at least mildly amusing. So look at, look at the gratitudes pouring in. Yes, yeah. Thank you guys. Just selfishly, fucking seriously, I appreciate it a lot. We we were we were both a little blue about all the the when we said we were going to take a break. We were both a little. Uh, I don't know what's the word I would use. We were a little nonplussed by the reaction that that we forget that you guys like us sometimes, which is weird, but we don't know why. It's because that's so well, true. Yeah, weird flex, but okay, you know. So we were really that's grateful fun. for that, and uh, and uh, I, I, I mean, I, the people that are in this thread right now, I see you out there on social media fighting the good fight. I see you out there uh being exasperated and and losing patience and and holding space for people that maybe still are teachable and want to learn things um and it, yeah I, i'm grateful to all of you for 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 being the people that you are um Corey and i first started working together maybe six months into that adventure uh, we had a goals and gratitude weekend up at uh, the great spirit farm and when i look at the pictures of that group of people now you know, there's only one person in that whole group that I had known longer than a year at that point. And, you know, Corey's still here. Rachel Marie is in the thread right now. Those people, we know those people are out there in the world doing great things and good things and worthy things. And uh, that just hasn't stopped. I mean, I, there's so many of you that I wouldn't have had interactions with uh, if not for, for this, uh, this live broadcasting adventure, which was all Corey's idea. Uh, it was totally Corey that had us hit the live button speaking of which um i was talking to, to casey as well because she's she's doing like a, a permaculture garden in her uh uh at, at her farm which of course is just cool as hell yep um so i told her she had to meet to travis and shannon who of course own the great spirit farm where we had the original uh gng thing and we like we just we have to do it and like it's gonna have to be on the other side of coronavirus. So like a year from now probably, which sucks dog shit out of a fucking tiny straw. But there it is. Um but I, I almost wanna start like sort of soft planning whatever we can, right? Like we can't really do a date yet. Um uh, certainly not a date certain. Um, uh, but to have everybody down on the Great Spirit Farm and 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 just, you know do freaking you know hashtag coffee con or fucking you know another gratitude event i think would be uh it just it has to happen not yes. could be or would be like we're we're gonna do it uh, and we want all of you guys to show up and and camp for for a night or two and just fucking that'd be really cool uh so there's important questions <clears throat> that have have come across in the feed uh would you rather be a shapeshifter or a vampire are they not the same thing Certainly not. I mean, I think there are some vampires that can adopt the form of other things. No, you said we're well, you said werewolf, didn't you? No, shapeshifter or a vampire. You just oh, read a comment. Else, that I, okay, yeah. yeah. Just, so, somebody likes answering questions with other things. Would you like to be a shapeshifter or a vampire? I would like to be a turnip. Definitely, definitely a shapeshifter. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Uh, Odo from DS9. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, and I'd rather not kill people every day. I mean, right. it's, just, it's just me, but you know, right. although <laughs> I mean, if you put a bunch of Trump supporters in a pen, yeah, 
So did you hear about the guy last week started a group, a, a, a white power group, and uh, drew, drew drew in to, you know thousands of new members and started screenshotting their racist comments and sending them to their employers? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Tragic, huh? Superhero. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It turns out, by the way, I was not left an admin of that group we were discussing. It was just it's a public group, so I, I saw new member notifications, but that would have been a that would have been an adventure. Wow. Yeah. That's I a mean, great idea. Yeah. I don't know that I could stomach it even for that long. Right. But I wish I could. Oh, you went to over a thousand members in three days. See, this is the thing, like, and you just, you farm, 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 take records, take records, take records. And in a weekend, just like dox them all. Yeah. That's righteous. Yeah. S Sasha Barrett Cohen. Exactly. Oh, that, I haven't seen the video of that yet, but, either, but it's got to be good. The best part of that story is not only did he do the thing, he left once they caught on to it, yeah. came back in a different disguise. And interviewed people. And interviewed people. <laughs> oh, it's just. And, and I'm so glad. Like, I know people, there are people that have like a visceral bad reaction to the Borat character and to, to Sasha's thing. But yeah. Think about when he shows up. He shows up when we are at our absolute fucking worst. He, he really, you know, he comes and makes, a, he's like Banksy. He's like the Banksy of acting. You know what I mean? He comes when we're at our worst and shows us that we can, we can approach things with verve and humor and, and uh, costumes. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. That he's just, he's, he's got giant, giant ovaries. I can't uh, like it's, uh, it's scary what he does. I mean, that's, that's not terrifying. there's no that's no joke what he did. Like yeah. the, that could have been very very dangerous. Um, that's crazy. Yeah, that's just crazy. Um, so I guess we should probably bring up the fact that there are a bunch of large brands, including Starbucks and like a bunch of others that I don't remember the name of, that are now pulling all of their advertising from Facebook because Coca -Cola. Facebook Cola. Yeah, I mean, yeah, little, it's a little company you may have heard little, of. Little, little, little brand of sugar juice. Um, yeah, so I mean, that I think is 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 pretty interesting, um, and that's the only kind of pressure that Facebook will bow to in any way, shape, or form. Um, so there's that. Yep. Yeah, I just got that from a, a private message as well. Michael Silvestri tells us a uh, Supreme yeah. Court strikes down restrictive Louisiana abortion law that would have closed clinics. Deciding vote, John Roberts. 5-4 decision, John Roberts. Fucking... Okay. I mean... I mean, it, you, you know, it's one of those things where, like, in diplomacy and in that kind of a court system, uh, if you're making everybody happy, you're not doing it right. Right? We're all... It, like, he's pissed off. He's pissed us off with some decisions, and he's got some decisions we've been happy with. That's essentially what a, what a court should be doing is you know that that's an indicator that they're on the right path and following the law for the most part uh however <laughs> however we need to replace the president of the united states so that the next two uh, supreme court selections go yeah. to a democratic president exactly uh, that would and, be yeah and you know for let's not ever forget that the reason we have the split on the court we have now is because because uh mitch mcconnell took a Supreme Court selection away from President Obama. And that was that's unacceptable. Speaking of which, it looks like the progressive guy is uh, beating McGrath in that in that Kentucky Senate primary. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he's been declared the winner yet, but he was leading last I checked. Uh, 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 a fiery black dude, pro-UBI. Young black progressive. Mitch, right, yeah. could be like legitimate progressive. Amy McGrath was pretending for really well. on abortion is not a good a little, look. Yeah, exactly. A accidentally called herself a pro Trump, pro Trump Democrat a couple of years ago. It's not a good look, but you know, again, like whatever, like we, if she was going to caucus with the Democrats, I was still going to be excited about it, but bookers are, 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 uh, it, that, it, it's definitely uh, better. Uh, ask Gallagher said for the record, while I must use this platform at this time, <clears throat> that sounds familiar. Uh, Zuckerberg is a weasel. I have no issue making this opinion public and Ash, that's why I sent you, the invite link to chirp which is going to be our attempt 
to build a better mousetrap when it comes to uh, social media. And of course, we want you guys there for that. Man, Starbucks, I didn't know Starbucks was number six, uh, the number six advertiser, if I'm reading that correctly, Dave. That's fucking crazy. Hey, Corey Elko, I want to link to that group. Uh, there's a bunch of shit posting fan groups, and they're all fighting each other with memes. A bunch of them banged up on a Facebook group where they all pretend to be ants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to see that. Human beings are weird. I love Facebook groups that that land on a theme and yeah. keep it going for months and months and months and months. Like I belong to a group called Entomemiology, which is all bug jokes. And uh, and for a while there, anybody that asks a question about what kind of uh, what you know a picture with what is this? It was it's a brown recluse that was like that was just our and then people would get mad about it and we would be well I think you're a brown recluse. <laughs> Even my like I told my wife about it and like like months later some some topic came up and or no i think we just had, like had like a palmetto bug or something in our house and she was like is that a brown recluse and i died, <laughs> I died. perfect <clears throat> perfect brandy uh, goyette just messaged me to say that the board of county commissioners is having their mask discussion now for those that don't know uh there was a mandatory mask order issued in our county and of course jack mariano alleged doorbell liquor uh, immediately decided he was going to bring up. Uh, he, he filed uh, some. He's filing some sort of a motion with the board of county commissioners today to have it re- removed or put back to recommendation because he doesn't give a shit about you. He never has. He never will. And Brandy Goyette should have that seat. And we're Fuck counting yeah. on all of you locals to help us make that a reality. She needs money. She needs phone calls. She needs support. She needs you to have a yard sign. And uh, we want to help her in every possible way we can. So, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dave, a group of all bug jokes? That sounds insexual. <laughs> in- insexual. A, not really a pun, but... Close enough that I'm still mad. <laughs> <laughs> I love when I got your, your a terrible person response. I was like... <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I realize I'm giving everyone what they want, and I still can't stop being mad. Uh, Ash Gallagher said doorbell liquor. Is that what I heard you say? So, so yes, uh, just for, for any of you that, that haven't heard this, we have heard rumors. Um, and this, this might be loosely based on the fact that Trump supporting shit clowns like Mariano um, are just suck up. They just take truckloads of dog shit lies and eat them and then regurgitate them uh, in the form of other bullshit. Um, and so we wanted to have a bit of a satirical take around, around that. And we had heard slash made up a rumor that he licks, uh, 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 uh doorknobs, um, now, no, doorbells, this, sorry, doorbells, uh, um, it's a different sure fetish. It's, it's a doorbells, doorknobs, either it's way. Doorbells. Okay. Yeah. So many people have said, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. So, and what really is, is shocking about it is these things of course take on a life of their own. And so now we've heard from many people, many people are saying who have also heard that they, and they've heard as well, that he actually, you know, a sitting, you know, County commissioner likes to lick doorbells. And so, you know, like it's, it's, it's a strange thing. Um, and of course we realize we have to be responsible about this because the more times that you repeat that Mariano is a doorbell licker, you know, like it becomes part of the common consciousness, which is problematic for people like, say Mariano. So we definitely don't want to repeat that he's a doorbell licker. Um, but we do need to bring it up anytime that it comes up because you know, it's, it's, we're a respectable journalistic news outfit that will automatically repeat, uh, any rumor that we hear, uh, as long as it fits our narrative of him being a, 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 a shit eating, uh, a doorbell licker. Hashtag satire, hashtag He's a doorbell liquor. I thought it was doorknob, but I'm really cool with it either way. Well, I would have to go back and uh, review a whole bunch of tape to see about that. <laughs> um, people are saying, yeah, PM'd you. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's say good things about our friend <laughs> Brandy Goyette, who had, ran uh, for District Four uh, in the last election cycle and lost to uh, Mike Wells. Uh, who's another kind of problem in, in our county commission. And uh, she is now, because th- th- they misplaced her, they had her living in the wrong district uh, that enabled her to make a serious run at Jack Mariano. 
Uh, she absolutely has a great chance at beating Jack Mariano. She's raised more money this time than last. Uh, she's been very, really super focused on her campaign as her primary uh, thing. Uh, there is just no doubt in my mind that a single mom, social worker, advocate for the homeless, uh, capital D Democrat from a union family is the right person for our county commissioner. We have no balance on the county commission. It is all Republicans. Uh, there is one independent in the race, but he is also a Republican. So that's problematic. Uh, why, why would you run as an independent if you're actually a Republican? He really should have run against Jack and primaried him. And it feels like... Uh, it feels like maybe there's something else going on there. And I, you know, I, I mean, I actually know this person and I know that uh, I think, I think that he means well, but I think he might've been manipulated into running as an independent, which, which may take votes away from Brandy. And this is not a good time for that. So uh, uh, you just want to make sure we should, we should maybe encourage, we should maybe encourage uh, as an independent, is this person pro Trump or not an asshole? He's actually he's actually not pro Trump, but they're, 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 he's had some problems already where uh, other people had posted some pretty graphic and nasty anti police imagery on his page. Then he made his announcement and then had to say he was pro police uh, and, and also pro Black Lives Matter. It's a, it's a complicated position, but uh, you know, look if if you if you're not smart enough to start a specific campaign page before you announce. Um, what are the odds, right? I, I just, I, I, right. I like, I like Victor. I've known him for a long time. He comes out on homeless issues on the same side as us. But this whole idea of him being a registered Republican and yet running as an independent, uh, what's the point of that? So, um, and I would love to have him come and explain that if he wants to join us one of these days soon. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but as you guys know, we've had Brandy on this show dozens of times. She is our uh, uh, she is our, our permanent standby co-host whenever we for as long, almost as long. I mean, she was on Coffee on the Dock within a month of us starting to do that show. Uh, <laughs> do you still find lube and condoms in your in your lawn chairs? Because that went on for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I think her main goal with that, and she succeeded uh, uh, a lot, was to just make me blush. Um, it worked. <laughs> a lot. Uh, if you wear a mask, you can't lick doorbells. It's it's it protects everyone. Just saying. And the, maybe that's why, as Dave points out, maybe that's why Jack Mariano is against uh, masks. Mm, Interferes with his makes so much sense. Alleged uh, habit of licking doorbells. It's possible. Again, we have no real evidence of that. Right. Just in uh, case you know anyone's wondering, like we really don't know. Yep. Uh, but again, so many people have been saying it that we would be remiss in our satirical uh, duty I, to not repeat it. I mean, look it. right here in the comments how many people are saying it. Even people that it's, don't even live in this area. Seriously, like, like people just kind of know that this is a rumor that's going around. You know, <laughs> Jack's wife follows so local Pasco just oh. so she can yell at me when I say things about him that are true. Uh, well, that's so nice. Shout out to the Mariano family. Hope you're watching this morning. Yeah. Uh, we think your guy needs to go. Yeah, I mean, seriously, anybody who supports Trump, I mean, that that would be enough. Never mind that, you know, every, like, I, I always want Brandy to, to cause she knows this list better than I do. We've been covering local politics <laughs> for a long time. Jack Mariano's not a good guy, and he doesn't give a fuck about you. That's just, that's just true. Um, I don't, I don't want to let anybody forget uh, that, uh, that Amber Mariano, who is our state legislator, uh, state house member, uh, she has a worthy opponent in Daniel Indonino, a guy we know really well and pretty much convinced to run one day sitting around. Uh, <laughs> actually, we convinced his fiance uh, that yeah, to run him and she did the work. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so and Danny now. is a great candidate and there are some reasons why you should not be uh, excited about Amber Mariano getting reelected again, uh, including the fact that the reason we don't have a West Coast AIDS coalition anymore is because she voted on the bill that destroyed their funding and then later claimed she didn't know what she was voting on. So, nope, that's a nope from me. She talks a good game about equality and LGBTQ rights, but none of the things that she's done have helped with the protection of LGBTQ people in our community. Um, and also, when she first ran, uh, I still have a piece of the campaign literature in my desk drawer here somewhere, somewhere buried in there, that says, we support the full Trump agenda. Yeah. So, Nazis. Uh, sorry. Have fun with that. How's that going? Kids in cages. 
pandemic response disaster, putting bounties on American soldiers. And there are pictures of her shaking that fucker's hands on the runway Dude, at Tampa we didn't Airport. Talk, talk about that. So, yeah, I don't know if you guys have been watching the news lately. Uh, it's not good. Um, yeah, so before we get into that, I, I, I should say, if you're not following the Lincoln Project on Twitter or Facebook yet, just, just do yourself a favor. Um, it, it's become pretty clear that they're going to put out the most viscerally fantastic ads of the season, and they do, like, one every other day. It's completely nuts. Basically, anytime something totally fucked up happens, which, again, of course, in this era is every day. Um, so, and I saw the AP, uh, Greg, confirmed it today, that he absolutely categorically was briefed out loud in English. So, you know, a story came out over the weekend that uh, Russians were uh, putting bounties on uh, uh, the heads of U.S. soldiers. Right. Um, there is in Afghanistan, obviously, um, obviously 20, 20 casualties uh, in the in the last year. I don't think we know specifically if any of them were were linked for sure. But I mean, we could assume that they all were. We don't know. I saw last night that there are two specific incidents that are now being reinvestigated, one that killed three Marines and another that involves SEAL Team 6 uh, in, in their, their special warfare operations. Uh, or, in fact, it may have been SEAL Team 6 that uncovered the bounty program because they raided a, a Taliban head, headquarters, $500,000 in cash, and, uh, and uh, some information that led them down this path. Okay. Uh, so, so you got to so, call yeah. the Navy SEALs liars now to tell, to tell the world that this it, isn't true. Right. So and this is the thing, right? So the, it, came, it comes out that he knew in March... Uh, after that, uh, they they uh, you know there's reporting that he got a suite of possible uh, responses from you know slapping uh, Putin on the wrist to ratcheting sanctions, all, all things that you know any reasonable president would be offered in this uh, kind of scenario. And instead, he was like, "Well, that's cool, but what I really want to do is is put Daddy back in the G8." Uh, of course, Russia was kicked out of the G8, which became the G7, for yeah. annexing one of its neighbors, which is you More know than not one. A, yeah, exactly, a exactly. huge chunk of the Ukraine now. Yeah, so I mean, this is this is this is in, insane, right? I mean, the the uh, you know, I heard a couple of people talking about how you know Trump knew all of this stuff when he was you know asking everybody at uh, uh, the freaking military school what's the name of the military school west point west point um and all, of course all of them had to come back to graduate so that the the fuhrer could uh, uh could bless them um yeah. in the era of covid which itself was fucking <laughs> crazy but he knew even then which is which is nuts <clears throat> um yeah and of course trump responded like a good almost 36 hours later uh with what i we weren't what he just lied of course right yeah. Um, but then there was, you know, the 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 other question that if he's if he's telling the truth, that means the Pentagon, the CIA, and the uh, uh, um, basically the the entire intelligence, uh, you know, University of the United States didn't tell him. Yeah. But, By the way, the, who, like, let's yeah. not forget who's in charge of who is the DNI right now. The Director of National Intelligence is Ratliff, the senator that was so awful, so awful during the Mueller hearings. That's who the DNI is now. Why would we be at all surprised that he kept that from the president's desk or shaded it or is lying about it now? None of those things would surprise me. Right. So, and yeah. the thing is, you know, there, there's there's credible reporting now that he absolutely knew. And honestly, like, of course he fucking knew, right? Yeah. But there's no way that the, the Pentagon and the CIA wouldn't make sure that this got to the president's desk and that he heard it. Um, but yeah, he did, he did nothing. And well, and again, it was less than nothing. Because uh, what he really wanted to do was reward them. Yeah. I mean, that's that's insane. That's just completely, completely insane. And meanwhile, yesterday, the president retweets a video oh, yeah. <laughs> of one of his supporters chanting white power at the villages uh, over there between Ocala and Gainesville. Isn't that charming? The villages, by the way, has the highest STD rates in the entire state of Florida. And and not uh, a mask in the video, not so, a single one. Yeah, but uh, you might actually be able to get some some cheap property out there in a couple of years. I would never want to live there. No, I would there. rather live in the worst part of Marion County than to live in the villages. <laughs> I would move to Unabomber Estates in Marion County before I would move to the villages. 
<laughs> at least you know those rednecks you know what their right. what their deal is they're all sporting yeah, rebel that... flags so <laughs> yeah sylvester i saw you actually mentioned this on facebook so and the second he found out why didn't he act and even better why isn't he acting now why you're right no Let's matter just say no he matter, wasn't briefed right no matter what and this is probably what Biden should do as opposed to focus on all the lies again and again and again, because that kind of I don't think that breaks through as much as it should, even though he had a great thing about like, we are supposed to be the country that's fighting against white nationalism, not retweeting it. Like, I was like, that's pretty good. Oh, it's kind of crazy. Uh, you know, it's uh, all the, the shit we have to say out loud in 2020 that we just really didn't think we had to say out loud. Ash, I have an answer to that question. Florida, how'd you all get so funny? Listen, almost oh. no one here is from here. That's the problem. When you complain about Florida drivers and Florida craziness, a lot of those people are from elsewhere. Uh, yeah. We have a net. I think two years ago was the first year we'd ever had a net fall in population. And that was after the mortgage crisis. Maybe 2011, 2012. But as long as, as, long as I've been alive, which is many thousands of years, uh, we've had a net positive influx of people to this state every year. More people have moved here than have died here uh, since the 50s except for the last uh, maybe four years. So maybe some people are figuring it out, but not nearly enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dave brings up a good point. He and his supporters have actively railed against and discredited intelligence services for years now. It's not surprising at all, which is part of his non-denial denial now. Like, yeah. even if we did hear it, we didn't believe it. So that's why we didn't do anything. Like, okay, buddy. Yep. Wow. So... <laughs> Michael Sylvester, old people are whores. Hey, man. Uh, I mean, at least in the villages, that's uh, apparently the case. Uh, you say whores, I say sex positive. Oh, listen. I've been. I, we watched all of uh, Killer Mike Trigger Warning. Yeah. Last night we liked watched all the episodes, and the one about Crippicola and and blood pops. Yes. yes. Holy pop. shit! <laughs> so it's good. so brilliant. There were some of them that I was kind of like, uh, was like the one where he's trying to start his own country. Yeah, it was a little. Oh, I didn't see that. That was a little reality TV showish. But the one about getting the Crips and Bloods to market their own soda was one of the best things I've ever seen. And yeah, like watching stuff. that focus group, there's a focus group of people, and the minute they find out it's made by the actual Crips, they're like, "You could get shot for buying a soda." And another guy actually says out loud in a room full of, of course, mostly other white people, uh, something along the lines of, "Oh, well, you know, the Hell's Angels, they do good in their community. It's not you know, like." but the crips don't I, you know you're so close <laughs> such you know yeah and, and i was shocked that none of the like when the crips came finally came into the room i would have gone right at that guy like where the fuck you get your information about the hell's angels from that biker show that was on tv for several years what you know what's that you can still buy it yeah can you, i would imagine you probably get it online hey eh? because yeah. you can i'm gonna have to buy some yeah well you gotta buy blood pop too otherwise um, yeah, I'm all right with it. <laughs> with it. Fucking balance, yo. I think that's beautiful. Um, yeah, and, that's and, good and, stuff. Like, like I, I was late to learn this, but um, communities that are badly served or underserved by the police, this is what they have to do. They have to create their own system of justice to work around, you know, making sure people are okay. And it's violent and it's not cool, but it's real. And that's what they have to do. Right. So, I mean, one of the things that I learned in my rides, my ride alongs with the sheriff's office and from my work in domestic violence counseling was that when the, when you make a call to the sheriff's office to come because somebody's getting the shit beat out of them, the first thing they do when they arrive on the scene is, is check everybody for wants and warrants. Right. So even the victim is hesitant to call the police because they need daddy's income. They need the income of that person to, to actually right. keep their home and feed their children. So even the kids are trained not to engage with the police because they don't want, you know, they don't, they don't want that kind of trouble. And until we have a better system of keeping people out of jail, right. For things that are not violent or not, you know, ongoing problems, uh, the more likely we are to actually be able to reach those domestic violence victims and perpetrators and change their lives. Uh, that's not to say that someone who is guilty of domestic violence shouldn't do some time in jail, but that's not necessarily the best place for them. And I'm sort of that midline. Like when people do an assessment with me to participate in BIP, they think what they're coming to is an assessment where I'm going to decide whether or not they need to be in a BIP program. That's not it at all. The question is, are they, are, are they adequate? Are they, are they, are, will they fit into a group environment or should they be in prison? 
right? That's the assessment that we're making is whether or not that person can actually benefit from the class or they need to just go ahead to jail. Um, anyway, I just, I know that's off on a tangent, <coughs> but if you wonder where groups like the Crips and the Bloods come from, if you wonder why these street gangs exist, go all the way back to the forties and fifties. And that's what you're going to find is they were, they were a replacement for uh, the police in underserved communities. You probably say the same thing about Italian American organized crime that started in New York and the big cities in the Midwest as because the Italians were drastically underserved by police forces. And that's what they had to replace them with. So. In other news, uh, the Lincoln Project just tweeted, Kavanaugh tried to strike down a four-year precedent, but instead strikes down Susan Collins' 24-year Senate career. <laughs> and also, Jim Jordan is very, very sad uh, and angry at Roberts and asked him if maybe his Second Amendment rights are next. <laughs> to which, to which I think Roberts... Really good time. They, they were like, okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, the horse whisperer that you turned me on to before anyone praises John Roberts, remember he was the guy who gutted the Voting Rights Act and enabled the voters pressed and elected Trump and put Kavanaugh on the court. That sounds like it's uh, like it's directly a John Favreau tweet. Who was that? That was the horse whisperer that you. Oh, yeah, same kind of yeah, to? yeah, yeah. Uh, same same milieu. Okay, so I want to I want to share this PSA. Uh, while we're well, let's let's have some fun with this. Uh, I don't need audio for this. It's just a it's just a graphic. Um, okay, Corey, making sure you can see that. Okay. Yep. Uh, PSA from an art conservation perspective, it's honestly fine to throw paint on memorials of genocidal racists. Paint is pretty easy to clean off. What would be an absolute shame is if people were to throw certain common household items that can cause irreversible bronze disease. Bronze disease happens when a <laughs> copper alloyed artifact, for example, most metal busts, plinths, plaques, and particularly Victorian oh. era artifacts, that would be all the Confederate statues, comes into contact with chlorides, water, and oxygen. It causes irreversible damage and is practically impossible to stop. What are chlorides, you ask? Well, you can Google it. <laughs> but suffice to be said, they can be found in household salt, seawater, and a few food products like tomatoes. They activate in contact with polar solvents, including water, and are often found in conjunction with them, like in Posada. Once chlorides have come into contact with the metal, they stick and spread we used to think bronze disease was caused by bacteria because it'll spread from one part of an affected artifact to the whole thing and also to anything touching it. Now, it's extremely difficult to remove the chlorides once oh they're on. God. It can be done, but the chemical needed is super carcinogenic, so it's rarely used. Instead, conservators usually pause the disease by removing either moisture or oxygen using specialized storage. Of course, that would mean the artifact can't really be on display, which is an absolute shame. Because, like, if somebody were to, I don't know, throw a ton of tomatoes at a bust of a genocid genocidal racist, nobody would probably notice the chemical reaction until it was too late to save the, the artifact in question. And this isn't a pretty deterioration either. The metal starts flaking off in this gross white fungus type thing. You've seen old coins dug, dug up in a garden like that. I can't think of any person with a memorial plaque on the wall of buildings who deserves that fate. And, of course, once the damage is done, it can't be. It can be paused or stopped, but it can't be reversed. In 150 years, we haven't found a way to restore artifacts that this happens to, which is a shame, since we all immediately forget history when statues are destroyed. And y'all can stop direct messaging the museum to complain about me, because like A, my boss thinks I'm funny, and B, she also supports BLM, and C, I'm the one reading the direct messages. That's from Madeline Odette, who is a... A, uh, a museum conservator of artifacts. card-carrying fucking superhero. Yeah, so tomatoes. <laughs> it would be a real shame if anyone were to throw tomatoes. <laughs> oh, shit. At Confederate statues. You know, what's, you, know what's, you know what's good? Fucking science is good. That's what's good. <laughs> yeah, I just love um, that set of tweets. I, I laughed my ass off when I saw that the other day. So... Uh, you're going to put anybody that buys tomatoes on a watch list now. Maybe. Um, is it George Carville? What's Carville's first name? I don't really care. Anyway, he's like like old school, old school Politico dude, right? Yep. Um, James. James, thank I think you. think James. I think you're right. Yeah, James Carville. Uh, was on last night. He's been basically saying since Thursday that uh, uh, Trump's already lost and that he actually – 
uh, might not even run. Um, and that the Republicans should all be afraid. Now, I was talking to Greg about this yesterday. I I agree with you, Greg, that this this you know we can't presume that that's even remotely plausible. I just like it because if anything is going to pile gasoline on the dumpster fire that is Trump's fragile psyche, that was a quote. Um, I think this is interesting, right? And really, it starts putting the pressure where it needs to be put, which is on Republican senators. Because they honestly should all be fired for not uh, convicting anyway. Um, so that's that's kind of fun. But it, I got to go back to the, the the Brett Kavanaugh thing though, because the New York Times is fucking busy news day, right? Like that. <sighs> anyway, he last night he was saying that this is probably going to be Trump's worst day ever, and I just love him for that because honestly, anything that kicks Trump in the balls is awesome. Um, Bob Woodward was prepared to unmask Brett Kavanaugh during his contentious Supreme Court confirmation hearings. As an anonymous source for a book the Watergate icon wrote more than 20 years ago, but was talked out of it by the Washington Post's top editor. Uh, Woodward was reportedly set to expose Kavanaugh as an anonymous source for his 1999 book Shadow, Five Presidents and the Legacy of Watergate. At the time the book was being written, Kavanaugh served as a lawyer uh, on independent counsel Ken Starr's team um, in its investigation of President Clinton. So, and this is where like all the, the, the questions that were, were coming at Kavanaugh about that stuff. Um, I mean, God damn it, Bob Woodward. Anyway, oh, so uh, Elizabeth was modification of this idea. Uh, rub tomato paste on embarrassing places and let the monument get bronze disease like they live in the villages. <laughs> A scorching case of bronze herpes. The show is over. <laughs> like it's we have to just leave that there. Um. Yeah, good point, Sylvester. Carville was the front man for Hillary's going to win. And in a normal universe, he totally would have. So you're totally right. Or she would have. Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. Nuna is trying to sue a cow. So here's the thing. Twitter has been removed from uh, uh, being a defendant on the uh, the Twitter cow case. Sadly, the Twitter cow is still in the crosshairs, but luckily they still don't yeah, know who he is. If you're, not, if you're on Twitter and you're not following Devin Noon's cow, Oh, it's you are so not good. living right. Also, Devin Noon's cow's mom, also worth a follow. Um, yeah, those are uh, those are two that you should be. Following. Yeah, <laughs> I Virginia, I like. I even hesitated to bring it up because you're totally right. She said, "Nope, we need to keep fighting like they're 50 50 We need to keep fighting like we're ten points down. Yep. Um, like right until you know November fourth. Yep. Um, for sure. Uh, so yeah, that's probably the last time I'm going to bring up polls. And if I do, feel free to throw uh, tomatoes at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to bang the drum for a minute for our friends at Hands of the Goddess, which is a local five hundred one c three charity. Uh, I had a conversation with uh, with uh, with Kira Withers last night. She and her husband Randy are the charity in question. They do a lot of homeless outreach work. And they also provide a lot of food support for families. They have a food program. It's thirty five bucks a month, and once a week you get two or three boxes of food. Uh, the problem has been that not as many people are donating to Florida Food Force's food bank system. And so they've been going out of pocket using charity money to make sure that the people that are signed up for that program are getting enough uh, food to make it worth a while. And, and I, I, I participate and we get way more than $35 worth of food every month. You don't get any choice. Basically, you get what you get. And sometimes it's, uh, it's good stuff. Sometimes it's stuff that you want to pass on to other people. <laughs> but the, the, the reason I'm talking about this right now is because they are desperate uh, for donations and more help. And I know that some of you have dug deep and helped them in the past. And so, uh, you know, you can cover your ears, Casey Marion, because I know that you donate to them on an ongoing basis. But if you have never uh, donated to them and you're looking for a, a way to help people who are food insecure in our community, and that's a problem that has gotten worse and will continue to worsen uh, throughout the COVID crisis. People are losing their jobs. People are losing their homes. Uh, they have paused the homeless outreach where they're going out to meet people in the woods and to, to distribute items, but they are still doing the ongoing work of providing food support for families they know are in need. And, uh, and Hands of the Goddess Florida could use your help. I'm going to actually, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to get their page here. Um, you could vamp if you wanted to. You can vamp if you want to. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, so, um, I was actually going to, uh, I was just pulling up the, uh, the, the chirp link. Um, if, uh, oh, if anyone yeah. hasn't jumped on the, uh, 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 that waiting list yet, you can, you can hit it there. 
Uh, and definitely make sure that you copy your referral link because you can actually work your way up uh, the list. I think if you if you invite like three or four people, you're going to be instead of being a thousandth on the list because I think we're pushing a thousand people on the waiting list right now. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, you can you can get up uh, many many hundreds of spots by just having a few friends sign up. So, um, and again, <laughs> we're probably going to launch it about. Uh, <laughs> Casey, uh, we're probably going to launch in about a month. Uh, but definitely, yeah, that was just, uh, uh, I was going to post this link there just because we were talking about it before. Uh, if you can, um, or if, you know, if you're deciding, do I spend mental power on Hands of the Goddess or on Chirp? Chirp's going to be around forever. Uh, fucking go to Hands of the Goddess. Yeah, awesome. you, by the way, you, the Hands of the Goddess link is right there. They are a 501c3. I want to make sure everybody knows they are a legit charity. They collect, Kira and Randy collect no money from the charity to, to administer it. They do all of it out of pocket uh, and from donations. And all of 100% of the donations go right back into the programs that they, uh, that they run and support. Uh, they are deeply connected to our local community and, and awesome human beings uh, in addition to the charity work. So they could use your, you can click the link and on there, I believe you can donate directly on their Facebook page. Or you can uh, you can contact Kira on the page and find another way, PayPal, things like that there. Drop by, put a check in the little glass jar that's out in front of the house because uh, they're right here in Newport Richie. So if you're looking for a way to help some folks this week, um, I, I would strongly recommend that you support them because they're doing the work of their gods and uh, they're doing good work in our community. You may notice how few religious charities I support. <laughs> uh, they are definitely one of those. So... That's it. That's all I want to say. And get on the chirp wait list. Uh, and, and then you can be clueless like me because I don't have any idea what the f- is going on. Uh, haven't seen the interface yet. Don't know what it looks like. Don't know anything about it other than it looks like it's going to be a cool thing. Well, and I think the I think the biggest thing for me is that we're going to have a direct line to take all of our uh, ideas about what you know a social media thing should be and and have a really, really good chance of getting them built into yeah. the platform from the beginning the idea of um, owning your own memes so you create something and it gets viral um that well and, not a bad and idea. that yeah i think that that's that's something that's been on my brain for a long time and i think it is going to get integrated because craig uh, uh kurt's been working on uh niffy's uh non-fungible tokens which basically that's what that will be hmm. um and integrate that integrating that th- them into the actual platform I think from the beginning though um, everybody's going to get seeded some coins when uh, when they join up. You're going to get a lot more if you get high up on the waiting list. Wink, <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, but every single time that, that you like something, that's actually going to be a little micro expression of, of real value, right? right? So you know it's going to it's going to cost a tiny little bit to post. Uh, uh, and again, it's coins that we're going to give out to everybody. So you'll start with like a hundred posts or whatever it is. Um, and uh, you know if you put something on there that gets you know thousands of likes, you're actually going to be earning real. Uh, uh, value, which is, I think, going to be really interesting. Hey, Brianna Alliance, nice of you to join us this morning. Uh, she was, uh, I told her we were going to be live this morning in case she needed some gaslight shelter, and she said, I'm running Hey-o. to it. So she's late, but she's here. Uh, same thing uh, earlier this morning. Uh, Lori had the same issue. Uh, I'm just really glad you guys are here today. And we talked, Casey Marion, we talked about you at the top of the show. So you might want to go back and watch that again. It was nice things. Corey said nice things about you. So, I mean, there's that yeah between you and a few other people you're why uh we're here this morning friend eater is asking a very relevant question that i don't really have an answer to are we back permanently <laughs> i mean i can't be here wednesday mom mom has her stitches out from her eye surgery okay. so wednesday's a no-go for me my uh i guess you know we i wanted to come and just try this out today um i kind of like how it went I feel better, not worse. Um, and so as long as that is the, the, the case, I think we should just keep doing it. So I'll be here Wednesday. Um, and, you know, we'll start with the, the, the gratitude and any other kind of positivity, like any kind of thing that you're doing to kind of balance out all the shit news. You know, like I'm going to bring my oh, some good news. Bring us a comment with some good news in it. Yeah, exactly. Like if you anytime you see any good news, tag me in it on Facebook. I'll collect it. And because I think like the first five to 15 minutes, I, I really do want to focus on on community, on gratitude um, and on any good news that is out there. Because I mean, the rest of the show is going to be shitty. We know that the news is always shitty. 
That's just the Although way that it yesterday, is. Yesterday, the Mississippi state state legislature, the House, Legit. Mississippi House and Senate, both voted to remove the Confederate flag from their state flag, uh, which is because basically it's going to cost them money now with the NCAA and, and NASCAR saying they weren't going to be having events there anymore. Right. You know, it's going to cost them money. So um, should have happened 50 years ago because, <laughs> you know, it should have happened. But yeah, uh, if, if morals and ethics had anything to do with it. Yeah. No, yeah. Thank you to corporate America for saving us. And the, and the NCAA. So go figure. Yeah. Yeah, Fred. Uh, yeah, ten o'clock Eastern is our normal time for uh, for go, and so you know Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, has been our mo so far. So Corey will be back Wednesday. I'll be back on Friday, uh, and you know let's 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 keep it going for now. Yeah, I like it. Um, again, any uh, positive news? Tag me. I, I'll I'll keep a list, or we'll keep a list because uh, I do like that idea. Um, I'm gonna ask fervently that everyone throw some gratitudes up uh, in the first uh, five or ten minutes. Um, and uh, <laughs> the rainbow indeed. Uh, and then, you know, we'll get a lot about the day's business of trying to make sure that, you know, we know that, no, you're not crazy. Yes, it is that bad. It really is. Uh, yeah. <sighs> so uh, gratitude, good. Gaslighting, bad. Um, and people are definitely going to be trying to gaslight you right now. So, yeah. It, it, by people, he means Trump and anyone that supports him. Yeah. I mean, like, for example, people. local doorbell liquors. Yep. Yep. Ready to rock and roll? Let's get out of here. Ready to rock and roll. All right. We love you guys very much. Uh, we will see you. Well, oh. Corey will see you. Uh... Corey actually had a really good idea. Uh, yeah. End on positive news and start on the gratitudes. Nice. I think I like that even better. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. And, and Thank we'll, you, Dream. We'll, we'll, that's awesome. We'll, we'll have more helpful hints like throwing tomatoes at Confederate statues. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Casey, yeah. Jesus, we can't use these guys as our emotional tampons. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to take that. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, that's sure yeah. you can. <laughs> yeah, I was like, we'll be all right. We just may have to day. take a break once in a while, so don't be surprised. <laughs> exactly. If we, we'll if once okay. in a while, we uh, we have to take a <laughs> a rest period, if you will. Yeah, yeah, and and Gotta, make up. Make up more racist kung fu jokes because that's all. Oh my funny. god, I'm still. <sighs> yeah, all tampons matter. Oh, what's funny oh is I'm getting god. more shit for that than you are. That is funny. Oh, I don't know why that... Corey making racist. I was like, hey, I thought it was it, it was definitely a joke. It was definitely you know sarcasm, purposefully um... self-deprecating about my own racism. Yeah, but nope yeah all it's right okay it's all good all right we love you guys very much and uh cory's back on wednesday i'm back on friday and uh, probably yeah. both of us on friday but anyway uh, maybe friday if we ask nicely cory will play us a song what yeah i would love for, you right. know what i want to hear you do i haven't heard in a while no diggity i want to hear you do no diggity all right yeah just okay because. just fuck because. it all right so we love you guys very much yep sasquatch is real bye bye